really is exciting what we're doing together to capture containers and to make them developer ready, right, and bring it onto infrastructure that we can now operate at scale, living between those two worlds in a powerful, significant, and capable way. Really excited about this announcement. Well, without any further ado, right, we'd like to get on to the meat of the day two keynote. And to do that, it's my pleasure to have Ray O'Farrell, the CTO. Now, I was CTO for Intel for many years, so I sort of view it as that is like the certified smart guy of any organization. So it's my pleasure to introduce the certified smart guy of VMware, none other than CTO Ray O'Farrell. Ray? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. What a great VM world. You know, we got product announcements. You see new, uh, new uh, products appearing here this morning. Very, very great. Great to see you all here. This stadium kind of reminds me, I should be asking people to take out you know, their phone lights or something like this. It's like a rock concert thing. Um, what we want to do today, however, is uh, go through a lot of, uh, of the breadth of what VMware's products really are. And one of the things what we wanted to think through is how do we put those products together? What is behind when we build various products for you, our customers? What is our thoughts? What is our thinking on that? And really, there are three or four main driving principles that have really led us to look through those over the last year. And broadly speaking, we want to make sure that you can take advantage of the most modern infrastructure that is out there. When you see us uh, building partnerships with companies like Amazon. When you see us trying to figure out what is the best way to give you a globally consistent management and operations story across that infrastructure, it is to make it easy for you to manage and consume this new modern infrastructure. We also want to be pragmatic about how you consume innovative technologies. In the end, most of you are enterprise customers. You need to focus on robust quality delivery of your service. That is what your customers are demanding. And we need to make sure that that operation aspect of those products are maintained as well, even as you consume the new technologies. Sometimes you also ask us for new consumption models or business models. And you see quite a few of the products being announced at this VM world are delivered as a service, SaaS-based infrastructure. And we'll learn a little bit more about some of that in a few moments during the demos. And finally, developer friendliness, the ability to be able to allow developers to leverage this great infrastructure and build the applications, which I think if, if I got Michael's Dell, Dell's quote right, is the imperative of you being able to make your company unique and different from the competitors that are out there. That is what we focus on. So today in the context of this, we're going to give you demos across a large number of VMware products. And we want to do this in a way that uh, shows you how these products actually get used. So without further ado, what I'd like to introduce is a fictitious company, a company called Elastic Sky Pizza. So for those of you who are a long time VMware alumni, you'll know there's a little Easter egg in that name. Broadly speaking though, Elastic Sky Pizza is having a few challenges. It is a company which is facing disruptive competitors Recently, they've had a data breach, and they're worried about security. And anytime you face a series of problems like this, the organization says, we're going to have to revive the organization. And as all engineers in this group know, you have to give such a project a cool new name. In the case of Elastic Sky Pizza, they call it Project Leonardo, the big push to revive the company. And it's all based around digital transformation. So let's step back for a second. Check in with Elastic Sky Pizza. shell is part of a skeleton. I mean, most people seem to think a turtle can climb out of his shell and walk around on his hind legs like a person, but no. A turtle is stuck inside his shell for the rest of his life, just like most people. Good to know. You wanted to see me? I'll get right to the point. We need to move fast on finding a replacement for Bill. Congratulations, Allison. You're the new VP of IT. Sorry, that's my ringtone. Wow, that's, that's a great honor. I'm going to have to 
to think about it. Well, it's a lot to consider. I mean, on the one hand, the entire company is floundering, the customers hate us, they hate our app, and we're out of PCI compliance after the data breach. It will be a thankless job and likely will consume most of your waking hours. And on the other hand? Oh, sorry? Well, you said that was on the one hand, so what's on the other hand? Well, turtles don't have hands, Allison. They walk around on all four feet. Anyway, is that a yes? Sure, I'll do it. Great. Now, run me through your plan for migrating and scaling the production apps. You know, honestly, this should have been done months ago. I'm a little disappointed in your tenure so far. I've literally had this job for 10 seconds. Well, what are you standing around here for? Corporate just bumped up the date for the release of Project Leonardo because you're ahead of schedule. What? No, we're behind schedule. You want to know the difference between being behind and being ahead? Teamwork. Anyway, it's too late to change the date. The announcement's going out right about... <sighs> Sorry, that's my alert tone. Yep, there's the announcement. <laughs> So, it looks like our friends at Elastic Sky Pizza have a few challenges ahead of them. Allison's got to turn the whole infrastructure side of this company around as quickly as possible. And so we want to see how is she going to leverage products from VMware to help her do that. And to help me do that, I'd like to please welcome two people, one from our R&D organization, Purnima Padmavan, and from our Office of the CTO, Chris Wolf. Come up here, guys. How you doing, guys? Very well. So, you know, the challenge that's ahead of you right now is to basically partner with Elastic Sky and make sure Allison can be successful. So, take it away, Pramina. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. So, Allison has a big challenge in front of her, and Elastic Sky Pizza has ambitious goals. First of all, they want to completely transform the ordering experience a single click yet secure ordering experience. Number two, they want to overhaul their supply chain from vendors to delivery so that only the freshest lands on their customers' plates. And number three, they want to delight their users with a personalized experience gleaned from social media information. Now let's think about this. This isn't just about pizza. It's about you. We're all in this boat. You're trying to disrupt, and at the same time, you're concerned about who is your next disruptor. It may not be even someone you're thinking about. But to truly be that agile disruptor, we have to think differently. We have to stabilize, we have to retrofit that existing environment, but we still have to think about how we can pr pr uh, approach traditional IT in new and exciting ways. That is true. So to help Allison on her journey, we have a few featured VMware products. For you, Robin. To stabilize their environment, VMware Cloud Foundation, and to secure it, VMware App Defense. To help with migration planning, VMware vRealize operations, and to expand their capacity quickly, VMware Cloud on AWS. And then to help with migration planning, VMware vRealize Network Insight, and VMware vRealize Automation to do the migration by triggering vMotion. So let's get started, Chris. Let's dive in. Now, if we think about this, it's easy for us to stand up here on a stage and say, you know, our job is to make tech just seamless and easy. Our landscape is incredibly diverse. We have multiple public cloud and SaaS services. You know, we have data centers. We have branch and edge sites. We have quite a bit going on. You know, if we just say, here's your directive to stabilize or simplify, it could be overwhelming. Where do we start? Let's just level set here. If we think about our landscape, what we have is a variety of public cloud platform services. When I'm trying to do something fast, I need incredible velocity. Those services are fantastic. I want to take a mobile application from inception to completion and unlimited scale in 45 days. The public cloud is absolutely the way to do it. And for VMware, this is where our cloud services can come in, where we can give you consistent operations and management across that variety of services. Now, if we go down a little bit further, we can think about how can we really package our applications to have a lot more control, a lot of application agility, and a lot of flexibility. And this is where platform as a service and containers as a service can really help us out. The challenge we can have here sometimes, though, is for all that application flexibility, we could have some operational drift. You know, imagine moving an application and doing things that we always have to be faced with, whether that's uh, having audit or compliance 
considerations, or performance management or change management are backed up. These can be a bit of a challenge to recertify in a different environment if that stack below the application changes. But if we can layer that application or platform as a service and containers as a service on a common infrastructure as code layer, this is where we can get the best of all worlds, consistent operations as well as application consistency for our software engineers. So let's dig in a little bit. You can go to the cloud and you get infrastructure as code from a variety of sources. But where VMware is different is we can give you globally consistent infrastructure as code. It doesn't matter if your application is running at the cloud, it doesn't matter if it's running in a data center, it doesn't matter if it's running at the edge. You're going to get that same experience no matter where it is. And let's face it, infrastructure as code is a key building block. It doesn't matter how I expose that. It's something that all applications require. We can make that consistent. We give operations consistent tooling and operations. We can give our developers consistent tooling, telemetry, and that consistent experience using their own native tools that they're familiar with, which we think is very powerful for you and for the community. So we have the right answer for you there, Chris. It is VMware Cloud Infrastructure, anchored by VMware Cloud Foundation, which is a combination of vSphere, vSAN, and NSX. We give you a consistent, validated, prescriptive approach to deploy your cloud, cloud infrastructure, be it patching, updates, or uh, ensuring hardware consistency or software consistency across various stacks or silos, we have got you covered. Now, with the infrastructure consistency in, in, in place, you simply add VMware vRealize Suite, and you get a complete cloud, one that is fully managed, governed, and easily consumable by developers. So we have stabilized the environment for Allison. How about security? Let's dig in, Prima. Fantastic job with Cloud Foundation in terms of setting that, that infrastructure. Security, though, let's think about this. We heard about App Defense yesterday. When I'm thinking about security today, what is it like? I think it's like fishing in a lake. I go, I go fishing, maybe I catch three fish for the day. But there's probably a thousand fish in that lake. Catching three fish, it's not a good day. There's 997 that I didn't catch. That's security today. We can't continue to just hunt for the bad. We certainly have to do that. But with app defense, we can operate from a known good state. We can understand what's good about the application, how that application operates, how it uses the network, how it uses processors. And when things change, we can act on it. That's incredibly compelling. Let's get into the demo to see some more specifics here. So what you see here is you see the Elastic Sky Pizza payment app. We've been able to discover that app, and we can go ahead and click on it and get some details here. Now what you notice is initially we've been able to go ahead and pre-verify 85 different behaviors. We can do this from things like Puppet Manifest or vRealize Automation Blueprints and lots of other ways. We have lots of partner integrations that can help you with the pre-verification. We have one, at, one executable here, that Python EXE, that's not been verified. And this is how developers and security can collaborate together. So the developer can go in and look at this and say, yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's stored the right way. The ports that it's trying to use over the network is correct. So once I see that all that information is right, I can go ahead and verify that. Once it's been verified, I'm going to go back out to the main console here, and I can go ahead and turn on verification and, and turn on protection. So now we're monitoring and we'll, we'll be alerting and acting on this. Let's take a look at some of the actions that we can do as well. So if I'm editing the service, I can now go in and look at the rules. We can do lots of different things here. So I can quarantine on an alert. I can go ahead and kick off automated remediation. I can do things like uh, turn some NSX dials. I can start sniffing the network. I can also alert the application owner using the mobile app. I'm not going to alert Ray. Ray's my boss. That would not be a good idea, right? But I think I know who I can alert. Really, Chris? Really. You send the alert to me? Sure did. Well, looks like App Defense has already detected the problem and blocked the offending process. Because App Defense is always enforcing the known good, not just the static good, but it is constantly looking for the validated, updated state based on your DevOps process and developer check-ins. So it immediately detects any anomalies and even the ones that have not yet been identified or fingerprinted. How's that? That's pretty good. So let's fix the capacity now. Let's fix that capacity. Now, to fix capacity, we're going to start with the tool you all know and love, vRealize Operations. If we bring up vRealize Operations, 
What we can start with is if you look at the, just the overview pane here, we see that we already have some red and some yellow data centers. If I get into view all, what I see is I already have two data centers that are in real trouble here. I'm running out of capacity. So I want to be able to quickly add more VMware capacity to what I already have, and I can do that with VMware Cloud on AWS. Now what you see here from the interface is we've already deployed an SCDC, and I'm going to get back to that one later, but I want to show you how easy it is to deploy a new software-defined data center in an Amazon Cloud. So we already have the account set up. All we're going to have to do here is hit Next. I'm going to go ahead and put in a name for that new SCDC, and for the new one, we would start with a minimum of four hosts, and we can go up from there. We'd select a region, and off we go. I'll go ahead and put in my virtual private cloud information in subnet, hit next. And right now, we are ready to deploy. It's that easy. So now that that's deployed, let's just go ahead and dig in a little bit deeper here. We're going to use the, the existing one, because this is going to take about two hours for that deployment to complete. You see the overall view. We go into the network view here, and now what you're going to see is I have my uh, connections to the on-prem environment over VPN. And you can also see I have that connection to the Amazon Cloud using my Amazon Virtual Private Cloud connection as well. So now that all of this is done, we can go a little bit further here. We can open this up and look at Elastic DRS. Now this is a really cool feature. This is your set it and forget it feature for capacity. So once I've done that minimum amount of capacity, when I exceed a threshold, I will have a new physical host automatically added to my cluster. If I go back below the minimums, I can just take that host away. So this challenge that we had for Nima was capacity, it's gone, right? So now, let's go ahead and look at this in vCenter. This is the same vCenter instance you're using to manage your SCDCs in, in your own data center. And now look, we have the VMware Cloud on AWS SCDC provision. I can expand this, and now I see all of the different objects that I have in my existing data center. We're using hybrid link mode to give you that centralized management view across both VMware Cloud on AWS and the VMs that you're running in your existing data center. All we gotta do now, we can go ahead and look back at capacity. Check it out. Yeah, it looks like we have got this bright green extra capacity that has been provisioned recently. Now, as I mentioned, the ordering and payment app is PCI compliant and has to be on the <coughs> data center. But they're on-prem data center. Oh, so we're going to migrate some apps from on-prem to VMware Cloud on AWS. And that is where VMware, we realize Network Insight comes into picture. You all probably know Network Insight is great for giving you physical and virtual views of network flows to be able to do micro-segmentation planning. But did you know? Network Insight can also help you with migration planning. Right here on the screen, you can see a list of discovered apps. And these have been discovered using tags and flow boundaries. Now the migration index tells you how easy it is to move the app up to the cloud. A red bubble indicates that this app has got a lot of dependencies within the data center. That means when you pull the app out and put it in the cloud, there could be bandwidth costs and network hairpinning. So let us look, and a green dot means that the app is fairly isolated. So a good candidate for migration. So let us look at that big green dot, which is ESP vendor portal, Elastic Sky vendor portal. The area in blue shows the app and its flow connectivity with the rest of the services. Now the nice thing is, while there is some dependency, it is only 7% of the total flows that are there across uh, total traffic flows. So this is a good candidate to migrate. So let us do a what if planning. I'm going to choose the new newly provisioned SCDC, and we see immediately a list of VMs that will be migrated, the associated security groups, and we also see the new flow diagram. Now this flow diagram pretty much looks the same as before, so I know I have not created any additional complexity. So let us go ahead and migrate this app. So for that, I will switch to VMware we realize automation. This is a managed app, and it was provisioned by automation to start with. And so I can simply go to the deployments, Go to my day two action and select migrate. Now, it gives me a choice on which data center to migrate. So I pick the newly provisioned SDDC and select migrate. In the background, the vMotion kicks in and you can see in the vCenter client that the VMs are being vMotioned up 
to the VMware Cloud on AWS. So we have stabilized the network. We have secured the environment. Wait. So guys, uh, I think at this stage, Elastic Sky must be getting pretty happy in terms of you know stabilizing their basic environment. If we think about what was actually done there, though, we have given them a global consistent management across these clouds. That creation of the new VMware available infrastructure on Amazon was just so easy, leveraging many of the tools that you have today. Focusing on concepts such as security and making sure that it's enterprise ready, you see this new technology, App Defense, security right at the heart of the SDC, not some periphery peripheral security around the boundaries or edge of the application itself. You know, one of the purpose here, of course, was to make sure that um, uh, Elastic Sky were able to have a very consistent, stable environment. And of course, my brother, brethren here from the vSphere team said, you know, at the heart of VMware Cloud Foundation is, of course, vSphere. And I wanted to remind you that vSphere 6.5, update one, that has been the fastest adopted release that we have had in history. So when you're looking at getting the best stable environment, we need to focus on that as well. It is, of course, one of the components of VMware Cloud Foundation. So guys, let's see what's happening now over at, at Elastic Sky as they begin to look out how are they going to build the application. <coughs> everything is good. Uh, the real problem is on the development side, you know, after the last compliance issue. Actually, uh, I think the problem is that Ops isn't terribly agile. There's a lot of foot dragging that really... Foot is. dragging? Well, no, I mean, that's not the phrase I would use. I, I would say maybe doing our job correctly or, you know, fixing other people's mistakes. Anyway, we are going to need more money to finish on time. Us too. Much more money. There isn't any more money. That's it. Please. Try to see each other's perspective on this. Oh, totally. We are always trying to put ourselves in their sandals and see things from the incredibly narrow perspective of ops. I stand up for them when everyone calls them technical dinosaurs, overpaid plumbers, or underground mole people. <laughs> everyone says that ops intentionally destroys innovation, and that's not fair. A lot of times, it's not intentional. They just don't know any better. Seriously, guys, we need cooperation of here. Of course. Look, all kidding aside, I got a lot of respect for the dev team. Whenever anybody comes up to me and is like, ah, why are developers constantly breaking everything? I'm like, well, lay off the dev team. It is a real struggle for them to grasp a lot of these technical concepts. I mean, we're the engineers, and they're like artists. Well, they're like child artists who've never actually seen art before and don't really know what art is. Hey, guys, we have six weeks. Is this meeting going to run through lunch? We should order pizza. Oh, let's order from Shredder. Their pizza's cooked by robots. robots. That's our competition. Robot pizza. Serve all looking good. The oven's in my belly. The oven's in my belly. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I, I can relate. I had some buffalo wings last night, and I have an oven in my belly, too. Really, Chris? You want to share that? <laughs> yeah, not a good idea. Oh, look, I mean, Elastic Sky, they're, they have ambitious goals. They're looking to redefine the very way that they manufacture, make, and deliver pizza. Making pizza en route on the way to customers. This is really incredible dynamic stuff. And the other part, too, pizza fans that are looking to join that growing gig economy, yeah. they can sign up, and they can be a, a driver for Elastic Sky as well. Very cool. So they have a lot of work to do. So we already saw that they had anchored their PCI compliant bank backend, made it secure, and then they had migrated their vendor portal to VMware Cloud on AWS. Now we are going to show you leverage VMware Pivotal Container Service to deploy their front end, containerized front end. And then our automation service, by the way, this is a tech preview. But since it's raised day two demo, we were told we can show near futures. And so automation service to manage across all applications and deploy the vendor logistics on VMware Cloud on AWS and the social media engine on native AWS. And then our VMware NSX Cloud to secure it all with common set of policies. So Chris, let's take it away with VMware PKI. Let's take it away. It was a very exciting announcement that we had seen earlier. You know, if we think about VMware Pivotal Container Service or VMware PKS, this is going to give you the easiest way to deploy 
and manage containers and containers as a service at scale. So this is going to provide that multi-tenant container layer that your software engineers require, and it's going to give you that integration with all of your key operational tools at the same time. So we're clearly getting the best of both worlds. We're getting that consistent infrastructure as code, consistent operations, and most importantly, the consistent developer experience. Let's dig into the demo and take a look. This is the ops view. So you're seeing our VMware Pivotal Container Service operational interface here. And you can see some of the things that we can do there in terms of cluster deployment, host deployment, and things like that. I'm going to walk you through the process of how easy it is to deploy a new cluster. So I have my vCenter server instance in there. I'm going to give it a cluster name. I have some standard configuration settings that I would do here in terms of the number of nodes and VM size and things like that. Selecting the vSphere cluster, I can just go ahead and go down here. And I can just go ahead and hit create. That's it. That's it. The Kubernetes cluster is up and running and it's ready for developers. The next thing that I have to do, though, so that developers can use their native tools and interfaces, is to go ahead and get the credentials. So what I'm going to do is get these access credentials here for that particular cluster. I'm going to share that with my software engineers. And what I'm going to be able to do next is I'm going to be able to go ahead in from the CLI on the developer end and see what this looks like. So what you see here is I'm using a standard kubectl command to create this application front end from a YAML template. What I have done now is I'm just spinning it up. You're seeing my pods getting created, my application's coming online. I can again use kubectl to get the pods. Here we go. Now that's pretty cool, right? Native developer experience, my operations folks are using their tools of choice. It gets better though, the secret sauce with VMware PKS is actually what we've also done with NSX. So let's take a look at that. We go ahead, we're gonna search on the application. Again, this is our Elastic Sky Pizza app that we've just built. Now what I see is all of the different objects, the network objects that have been automatically created. So what we're doing via policy, we're creating all of our uh, networks, our firewall settings, route settings, load balancers, and so on. And we're able to do that in a way that's also not just encompassing containers, but our overall environment as well. If we go into the firewall rules, you can see that. This is what's slick. Single interface, single policy, completely unobtrusive to my software engineers, I've been able to deliver consistency for network policy for VMs, containers, and my data center infrastructure. Pranima, I think we should just end the demo now. I mean, how are we gonna top that? That, that was very cool, uh, Chris, but we are gonna top it. All right. Very cool. No, you don't have to worry about container networking, container storage, all of that stitched together in a truly multi-tenant enterprise-ready environment. But we have more. Allison now, we know, has to be up and running within six weeks. So she is planning to use VMware Cloud Services to get up and running with a swipe of a credit card. So what, are, what is VMware Cloud Services? Built in the cloud and built for the cloud a truly multi-platform polyglot cloud and built for all kinds of apps, traditional apps, cloud native apps, and hybrid apps. VMware Cloud Services gives you the visibility, automation, operations, governance, and security you need in order to operate in such a multi-platform environment. Now, the good thing is these were all made generally available just yesterday, so all of you can use them. So, Chris, how about we start with our uh, first service, which is our automation tech preview. So if we switch to the demo, you can see that there is the automation tech preview. And uh, clicking into the console, you can immediately see a catalog, a catalog of applications that the developers within the organizations ha have created. Now, this is a polyglot catalog. It has got container apps that will be deployed by PKS, VM apps that will be deployed by the automation service, and many others, and hybrid apps. So we will click into one of the blueprints. And right there you can see a visual representation of the blueprint. The nice thing is this blueprint can be truly cloud agnostic. So that, and so can the YAML code, which is infrastructure as code. And because it is cloud agnostic, it can be deployed to any cloud, your private cloud, your VMware cloud on AWS, or any of the native public clouds. And so you truly get globally consistent infrastructure as code. Pranima, my heart is smiling right now. I knew that. I knew that. Uh, so now, let us go and see how did these developers put together this application so quickly. 
So within the product, we have an in-product marketplace. We have sourced a whole bunch of applications, commonly used open source applications like Node.js, MongoDB, and curated that into the marketplace. Developers simply have to drag and drop or add to their YAML file, and they have their application stitched together. So let us go back to our blueprint and uh, deploy it. Now, when you go to the deployment tab, you can see various other applications that Elastic Sky Pizza has already deployed. You can see the Elastic Sky Pizza social media engine that was deployed to native AWS using the same product. And now you also see the Elastic Sky, Sky logistics engine being deployed to VMware Cloud and AWS. So let us go and secure these environments with our VMware NSX Cloud. Let's do it. All right, let's move into NSX now, and NSX Cloud specifically. So these were announced yesterday, and what we're providing as part of this overall experience is that single developer consumption model, again, from the infrastructure all the way out to the cloud. If we dig into NSX Cloud, think about this if we take a step back. If your network architecture resembles the same 90s-inspired playlist that you're hearing in the Vegas casinos, it's time for a change. We can't perpetuate a legacy networking model in a highly dynamic cloud era. And think about this from a security perspective. You know, our threats are increasingly dynamic. Additional layers of static-based legacy network te working technology is not how you can defeat these new models and threats. So with that, if we think about NSX Cloud, what's important here is this was entirely customer driven. When we had asked our customers, what is the top challenge you wanted us to solve in terms of your cloud operations, networking and security, was at the very top. So this gives you a very new fundamental way to consolidate and have consistent network security policy and management across multiple public cloud services. Let's dig in and look at an example. So what you see here is your EC2 management console. I have lots of instances that have already been deployed. What I don't really know is anything about the policy settings or the network settings for these instances. So we're gonna now go and open up NSX Cloud. So from our cloud interface, I'm opening up NSX Cloud here. I get that high level view of inventory, but the real exciting stuff is in the NSX Manager, so we're gonna open that up. Now what I can do here is I can go into Tools and I can do a trace flow. This is going to give me some information between a couple of the different instances that are running on my AWS environment. And again, these are native Amazon Web Services instances. This is not VMware Cloud on Amazon Web Services. This is native. What you're seeing here is that topology and you're also seeing my different network micro segments that have already been deployed as well. So I'm clicking on some of the different network components, and I can see that those are going to be highlighted. So you see your network settings, my consistency, my firewalls, my route policies, et cetera. All of that can be uh, managed and deployed via policy for my software engineers. Operations can get this consistent view and consistent management of networking across multiple public cloud instances today. Really exciting stuff. True. So, with that, Ray. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. We're really getting there with Elastic Sky Pizza at this stage. So, we've stabilized the Elastic Sky Pizza infrastructure. We've now made sure that their developers are able to uh, really focus on delivering the applications. So, you've got this developer freedom, but with that operational consistency. That's very much at the heart of what we're seeing with the way VMware wants to make sure that we empower developers in your organization. However, you got to make sure that when that app hits customers, sometimes the real world can be a little bit challenging. So let's find out what happens when Elastic Sky, Elastic Sky goes live with their application. I think it actually is a, it's quite sure it's not just So team, team, I just want to say how immensely proud I am of the job you've done. Project Leonardo is live. Oh. I never doubted you for a second. I mean, even when everyone was telling me, you know, they're going to fail miserably, and I replied, yeah, probably. I knew you could pull it off. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. The team here have worked incredibly hard to meet today's launch deadline. So. International Pizza Day, the greatest day of the year. And thanks to this app, nobody will ever have to order pizza by phone again. Well, the app's on a phone. Here's to everything working perfectly and nothing ever going wrong. Oh, ah, sorry, that's bad thing. <laughs> You're on with Celebration Devon. What? 
I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, ma'am, I don't know what your pizza is. <laughs> How'd you get my number? Is there a bird in this room? The app's taking over a minute to load. People are getting charged multiple times for the same pizzas, and online support is getting crushed. And you're just standing there drinking champagne? Allison, we need this fixed now. What's your plan? That, that is me. No, I still don't know where your pizza is, man. All right, I love you too. <laughs> All right, let's think about that. This is typical, though, of our lives in IT. We build really cool solutions. We think they're rock solid and perfect. Things go wrong. We work late. We eat a lot of pizza. Oh my God, all this talk about eating pizza is making me hungry. Let us just go order some pizza. I'm pretty sure we can get Elastic Sky up and running. Let's see if they know my preferences. I hope so. So, in order to get Elastic Sky back on track, we are featuring a few VMware products. The first one is Wavefront by VMware. Wavefront by VMware is a SaaS-based metrics monitoring and analytics solution that leverages the power of big data and machine learning to fundamentally transform the way developers and DevOps assure performance of their applications, especially applications that are running on containers, on functions, on VMs, across multiple different types of clouds. The second product we are going to be featuring is VMware Workspace ONE Intelligence. It takes those insights to the last mile, out to the end users and the mobile devices and the workstations, so that not only can you look at what trends are going wrong, but you can drill down into an individual transaction all the way down to the line of code that is causing the trouble. So let's go ahead and take a look at Wavefront. So right here, you can see Wavefront is already measuring the key performance indicators. Here you are seeing orders per second, and you can see that has dropped precipitously. Now, on the other side, you see a jumble of lines. That is a whole bunch of metrics being collected from the rest of the infrastructure, all the way from the network to the app, about 500,000 metrics per second. Now, let us go and see if there are any patterns that we can find with orders. So let us see if it's anything specific to a geo. Now you can see that pretty much the orders have dropped across all geos, so there is no geo correlation. How about by app server? Now right here you can see most of the app servers are serving up fine, but there is one app server, which is app server five, that is causing the problem. So already, within a few seconds, I have gone from a key KPI being wrong to saying App Server 5 is wrong, is the problem. Now let us switch the dashboard to App Server 5 metrics, and let us go to the right-hand side. Now, I could start mining all that data to find the root cause of the problem, but that'll probably take me a lifetime. So I'm just going to ask Wavefront to correlate these metrics and do its magic. So. Right here, I'm going to ask Wavefront to correlate orders per second with other metrics. And out of those 500,000 metrics, Wavefront has given me three. We know the free memory is dropping. We know the garbage collection rate is increasing. Usually, that is a standard app server problem. Great, we are going to reboot the server and ask the devs to figure out a long-term fix. And pretty much, we're there. Now, at the same time, I notice that the user registration rates are timing out. Now that is a perfect one. This is the mobile user to look at in Workspace ONE Intelligence. So let us do an in-context switch to Workspace ONE Intelligence. And right there, you can see that the registration timeouts are increasing. So we look and drill down into register account and look at that specific transaction. Now, when you look down at the transaction, you can see the specific line of code where the failure is happening. It is the electronic signature from the third party service. So we want to know if this is in a specific region. So let us go and look at the geo map. And right here, within again a few clicks, I know it is the Eastern region servers that are not serving up the electronic signatures properly. So just a call to the third party vendor and we should have the issue fixed. But now we also want to make a platform update 
a change so that this does not happen again. And so for that, you will just send out a JIRA ticket and get the platform update going. All right, Pranima. Now this is where, that was pretty hard to beat, right? That was pretty slick analysis. No Thank question you. about it. I'm trying to beat it. I don't think I can do that quite yet, but this is really, really cool. This is really, really slick stuff. What I'm going to show you is Workspace ONE mobile workflows. Think about your life when you have to do an approval. I mean, what do we do? We have to go get back to our desk, or maybe we have a mobile app. We've got to sit down. We've got to log in. We've got to look at it. We've got to click some things. We get it approved. It's pretty disruptive. Depending on where you're at in your life or how busy you are, that might be something normally you would wait until you got back to your desk or office. With Workspace ONE mobile flows, we can do this incredibly quickly. Check this out. So I'm going to get the notification on my mobile phone that the approval is required. I'm simply going in. And what I can see is I see that required approval update. I'm going to just tap on approval, see what it is about. Boom, done, approved. That's it. That code push can happen now. That's how easy that approval was. That was quick. Now, so we went all the way from alert to problem identification to resolution in a matter of few minutes. Now, I did want to say Workspace ONE by VMware is now available for free trial. So you all can actually sign up and try it. And that's so what we mean, <laughs> consumer simple and enterprise secure, right, right? Yep. Um, at this stage, I think, you know, uh, I should be billing uh, Elastic Sky because you guys were like their best consultants they could ever have, helping them get up and running it, right? Um, one of the key things, though, that I want to point out was when we looked at those metrics, right? It was around root causing based on those metrics. But it wasn't just focusing on application metrics such as CPU usage or bandwidth. It linked the application metrics to where those problems were. We spoke of things like the order entries or the geolocation where things were actually occurring. And that's a new power that we're beginning to see in these tools. The, the, the ability to look at metrics not just from the physical infrastructure, but how it affects the user experience leveraging that infrastructure. Of course, Elastic Sky is in pretty good shape now. The app seems to be running and you know, people are able to order pizzas. Surely they should be doing extremely well. Let's jump out now, 18 months, and see what the future holds for Elastic Sky. follow Asimov's first law of robotics? Mm. Great question. Just the guys I wanted to see. Why are you dressed like that? It's the future, Allison. Why are you still dressed like you were a year and a half ago? Oh, touche. Coincidentally, the future is exactly what I wanted to talk about. Did I hear someone say future? That's my favorite word. Let's whiteboard ideas for the future. Think I just follow you around with a whiteboard all the time? Oh, it's a very effective management technique, Allison. You should try it. I'm good. Okay, let's talk about the future. Now, we have the infrastructure. We have scalable capacity. What's next? Devin. Yeah, uh, I've been running a container service on Kubo. We could expand that out to bring microservices and micro-segmentation together. That's 18 months ago. Start thinking future. Stop using your human brain and use your turtle brain. Integrated ops models for IaaS containers and serverless? Great. Do it, but, but think even bigger, disruptively bigger. We use robots to deliver pizzas to your house. I mean, that's crazy, right? What's next? Okay, I've been thinking about this. What if we didn't have to wait for the customer to order a pizza? What if we could deliver the pizza at the very moment they start to feel hunger? Well, how would that work? Would it be some sort of psychic thing, or would we implant technology inside of every single living human being? Oh. I think we'd start by grafting neural hardware into the hypothalamus of every customer. Okay, I heard something about leveraging AI components. Yes, let's talk about AI. The future. All right, let's talk about the future. We're going to show you some VMware future and some VMware present to really get you to see what Elastic Sky Pizza is up to. Now, if we um, think about what Elastic Sky Pizza has done so far, right, they're building this incredible network of trucks that can deliver pizza and make pizza en route to a customer. Now, if you think about this, there's a lot going on here. There's some IoT concerns, right? There's sensors that I have to worry about. There's a lot that's required to make all of this happen. I'm going to have to have some sensors on the trucks so I can understand the ingredient levels. I'm going to need to know where the trucks physically are. Maybe they need to be repositioned based on consumer demand. And this is where artificial intelligence can come into their overall architecture. 
So these are some pretty exciting things, and there's a lot that we can do here to make this happen. What's exciting about Pulse IoT Center, this isn't the future, this is yeah. now. This is we the, can do this, this today. Is, yeah. and, and, and Chris, I think, as you mentioned, we have, um, fe we are featuring a few products. One of them are today, VMware Pulse IoT Center, to help Elastic Sky manage their entire sensor and IoT infrastructure and functions as a service so that they can execute those actions on those trucks at the endpoint to make sure that the right pizza is delivered to the right person at the right time. So Chris, incredible. let's yeah. start with the IoT process. You know, their mobile application even, forgot to mention this. Yes. Their mobile application can even tell you what pizza you can get the fastest. So if a certain truck has the ingredients that you want that's closest, not bad, right? Very nice. All right, let's think about Pulse now. So Pulse IoT Center is going to be able to manage everything from your gateways to your things. There's really two parts when we think about IoT. There's the management of the devices and the things, and then there's also the business intelligence that we want to mine from those things. So with Pulse IoT, we're really going to focus on managing those individual things. So this goes from the connected devices, mm -hmm. this goes from the gateway management, as well as understanding the health of the overall sensors. And we can do some automation and actions around that as well. Pretty exciting. What's also being driven by this is our open source project, Leota. Leota is a small piece of Python code that we can deploy to any gateway today. Really exciting stuff. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out on our GitHub page. Let's look at the demo to see what this is all about. So what you see here is the Pulse IoT dashboard. You see the total number of objects that we're managing so far. What we can do with this is we can actually go and we can filter so we can look at the different objects that are right here in Las Vegas right now. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we can actually see a particular uh, edge system. So we're going to look at the equipment that's existing on, an exist on a single truck right now. And what I can do with this particular truck is I can go down and look at some of the performance metrics. So I see the I.O. and CPU utilization. And to me, that looks like the truck's doing pretty good. At least the gateway's OK. But if yep. we, go, we go a little bit further, we can go and look at the sensors. So what you see here is all of the different sensors that are on the truck. And if we expand one out, yes, the demo team decided they wanted me to talk about the salami sensor, so there it is. But let's be serious here. This is a serious thing. We have manufacturing organizations already today that are using weight sensors in automated fashion. So when I have a sensor for each ingredient on the truck, I am going to understand when I'm low on inventory and when a truck needs to be resupplied. So that's really, really important here. So again, what we're doing with Pulse here is we're managing the overall health of the system and we're, we're be able to observe and act on the different parts of the sensors themselves. And then we can use some other intelligence to actually do some action there too. And just, just to be clear here, this is technology we have. This is based on VR ops. This is also based on AirWatch. And you can add NSX as an add-on component as well. And it is available today. Yes. Not bad, right? So, Pranima, we've talked about the overall management of IoT, but again, we want, those, we want to see how those sensors are actually doing things. How am I getting alerts based on different ingredient levels, right? This is where functions as a service or serverless computing can come into play. Now, what we're talking about here is a workload or a type of service that's traditionally a public cloud service, and we're running this on vSphere. This is exciting. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Is this some kind of crazy VMware thing or some self-serving idea? The answer is absolutely not. There are compelling business reasons why our customers are asking us to do this, as well as our provider partners. Now, just so you understand the overall architecture here, we have a variety of event sources. Those could be the weight sensors on the trucks, as an example. And those, are, those can generate triggers and rules. So the rules can have actions occur based on a particular type of trigger. So if I get below a particular weight on the weight sensor, as an example, I'll be able to execute an automated action based on that weight. So that might mean resupplying a particular ingredient. If there's a type of alert or something like that, I might have to uh, set up a service ticket now to be able to repair a bad sensor, right? So really cool stuff. It's one thing to talk about this. I want to get into the overall flow of this in a second, but I want to be really clear here. There's three fundamental use cases we see where this has become really important to customers. And the way to think about this, think about your Alexa at home. You know, when I talk to my Amazon Echo and I ask her a question, the delay time for me to get an answer could be two to three seconds. That's not a big deal at home. In a manufacturing organization, that's an eternity. That's too long. So one area that we can address is the latency. Yep. You know, Localized other, execution. Exactly. 
Now, other areas that we can address, too, is data locale. If I have so much data that I just can't move it to the cloud for analytics, I can move the functions to the data itself. I can have that execute closer so I get better performance, better resiliency. And the final one is privacy. We have organizations that have told us they want to have full control of how their functions execute. They want to have an audit trail. They want to have full visibility. Also really important item as well. Let's go ahead and get into the demo so you can see what this is all about. So what you see here now is our pizza trucks. Here they are in Vegas. And what I have here is if I dig in a little bit, I can go a little bit further and see all the ingredient levels on a particular truck. And we built this using our open source Clarity interface as well. So what you see here now is the result of functions that are executing that can provide the real-time inventory levels of my trucks, and I can also go ahead and query that information too. We're doing this through a variety of both get and put functions. We went ahead and built a UI just to make this easier to see in demo, but I can go ahead and look at one of the particular functions here. So my put functions might have been populating my database. When I want to run a, when I want to get that information from the database, I would run a get function here. So I go ahead and run and execute it. Now, there's a couple important points here. I want to be clear. You know, the first thing is, is these functions are executing just for the lifetime of the task that they perform. So on vSphere, we can run these on ephemeral containers on top of the VMware infrastructure. So they're going to run for the duration of the execution, and then they simply go away. That's the first point. The second thing to keep in mind here is what we had just done. We took what is a traditional public cloud service something that you expect to see in the public cloud, and we're bringing it out to you, to the edge, to your data centers. Use your imaginations here. If we just did this with serverless or functions as a service, imagine what we could do with something else. Chris, you, you're painting a wonderful picture of the future. So with functions as a service, this is, we are saying this is no longer just a cloud-delivered uh, capability. You can actually bring it down to the edge. To Whoa, what was that? Looks like Elastic Sky. Pranima, here's your Leo de Veggie. Leo de Veggie. My so the new my preferences. Fabulous. I'm That's done, it. Pranima. Let's You're go done. eat. Let's go eat. Guys, thank you very, very much. Excellent series of demos there. You know, when you look at uh, when you look back through that, you see how uh, the broad spectrum of products that VMware has and how they can be used in action as a company goes through a digital transformation. Even though we had you play along with us a little bit on our fictitious Elast Elastic Sky company, I hope you can see the power of what those products can do for your um, organization. You know, you probably don't face the same challenges that Elastic Sky does, but you do. You do exist in a world with constant change, constant transformation occurring around you. And so you need to be able to know that you can work with a company like VMware to help you um, become successful under those, uh, under those conditions. And what we're really asking you here to think about is to partner with VMware. We can give you this globally consistent management and operation story across private and public cloud. To trust in VMware. We can do things around security right at the very heart of the SDC so that you can truly deliver enterprise type security and applications. Leverage VMware when it comes to new forms of consumption or business models. The many products that we have out there today which are now becoming available as SaaS products. And build with VMware. Build great developer experiences and still manage to make sure that you get great operations day to day on this. So one of the things that uh, I do want to just, before we go, make sure that you remember there's a lot more going on at VMware. I want to highlight some of the showcases that we've going on here. And of course, we've got the party tomorrow night. The party is a great opportunity for networking and a great opportunity for us to say thank you for coming to VMware. Great, uh, that's a great place every single year. Very exciting VMware parties. I especially want to thank the team who built the demos for Elastic Sky who built those cool videos up there, and of course, Pornima and Chris for all that have done to, to work through all of this uh, demo here today. So with that, thank you very much. Have a great VMworld.